Nobody else should. Hey, amen. Hey, why y'all look in the mirror? Y'all want to make sure y'all look good. Am I right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So don't that, see being stuck up is different, but acknowledging what you look like is something else. Amen. All right. Say that loud. I look good. <laughs> amen. All right. We praise God. Let's have a good time with the Lord. And so, and afterwards, uh, we, we're serving is this takeout. It's takeout afterwards. That was an idea. There'll be takeouts. So, and we're going to take care of our guests first. Amen. And then it's sufficient amount for everybody. So, don't be worrying about putting stuff to the side. It's sufficient amount for everybody. My rule is give me mine last. Because once you give me mine, you've told me that everybody else has been fed. Amen. I know y'all trying to uh, pass it, put it, don't put mine to the side. If you give me mine last, then I know everybody's been fed. Amen. In other words, until I see a plate, Yes, should still be feeding people. And I feel good when I know people are being fed. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Got a couple of minutes, Brother Pierce, and who was in charge? 12 up. 12 31. All right. Amen. Just clap your hands, just magnify God real quick. Then. Just bring your heart in. Everybody just shout happy Sabbath real quick. Happy Sabbath. Uh, one more time. Happy Sabbath. Now give God a shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. We welcome you to our fifth Sabbath service, which is in charge by the youth. And we ask you to join us and help us to praise the Lord and move in the stirrings by the Spirit of God. Oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. Open the hollow of your hand.
but who is the first in my life, giving honor to the pastor of this house, the Apostle Michael Jeffrey Evans Sr. And then to his wife, the late lady Hattie Evans, to the assistant pastor of this church, the evangelist Margaret Barrett. Amen. To Evangelist Johnson, to all of our peer president of this service, none other than the brother Pierce Dennison. Amen. To all the hosts of God, people with children do honor you in your respective places. At this time, we're going to move along in the service. This time, we're going to have prayer by our Apostle Michael J. Evans Sr. Father, I
by Psalms 48 by our VIP president, Brother Pierce Henderson. Receive with a hearty amen. Amen. Scripture reading from Psalms 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for its situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her places for a refuge. For lo, the kings were assembled, they, they passed by together. They saw it and so they marveled. They were troubled and were hasted away. Fear took hold upon them that there, and pain as of a woman in travail. Though breakfast the ships of though though breakfast the ships of Tarshish were an east wind, as we have heard, so we have so have we seen in the sea of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. See you all. Amen. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go, or go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Mark ye well her, bulwark, her bulwarks. Consider her palaces, that ye may tell it to the generations following. For this is God, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our God even unto death. Amen. 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 We thank God for the reading of his word. At this time, we're going to ask y'all to remain standing as we have the opening hand blessed to the shrines by our sister Maya Edwards. Receive with a hearty amen. 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 I'm going to pray the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord. And our opening hymn will be blessed to the Blessed assurance.
It reads us, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yes, they speak daily, and I have told my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and also the Lord, and the Lord, they have to be the Lord, and the Lord, they take the light, and the Holy Spirit. Wherefore have we fasted, save they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold the day of your fast, ye you shall find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and despite the peace of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as you do this day, to make your voice be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou cause this a fast an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this a fast that I have chosen? Is it not to do thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the power that are cast out of thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. Then shall I let thy forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. And thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. And if thou call thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thou likewise in obscurity, and thou shalt be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a water garden, and like a spring of waters, whose waters fell not. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath of the light, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasures, nor speaking thine own words. Then shall the light have slept in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high place of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of the gate of thy father. For now the Lord has spoken to thee. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. First Peter 1 16. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all you see shall be added unto you. Song I'm going back to Jesus. <laughs>
the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. The sea and all that be the midst, and the rest of the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witnesses against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Nor is man servant, nor is maid servant, nor is ox, nor is ass, nor anything that is my neighbor. So we in the law, including James the second chapter, verses 10, 11, and 12. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet depend on one point, he is guilty of law. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou come to the rest of the law. So speak ye and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of the Lord.
For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. You may be seated at this time. Is there anybody here that loves my Jesus? Anybody here that loves my Lord?
request by our sister, sister Ashley Smith. And immediately following her, we will have the devotional service led by our junior deacon Maurice Evans, Brother Keyshawn Edwards, and missionary Marshila Evans. Receive it with a hearty amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath, everybody. First, I want to honor my one and only Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to give honor unto my pastor, Michael J. Evans Sr., onto the First Lady, um, Lady Hattie Evans, to the Assistant Pastor, Evangelist Margaret Barrett, to Evangelist Mary Johnson, and to our guest speaker. I'm not sure if he's here out here right now, but to Deacon William Mark Ramsey Jr. And to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, welcome to Faith Holy Church of the, of the Living God. We are excited to see you all here today. Um, you know, don't don't be shy to give God a praise and jump or shout or scream, whatever. Just Give him a praise at any time of the service, okay? All right. Well, we hope you enjoy and welcome. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I just want to uh, just want to fix something. This is the young people's service. So we are supporting our brother Keyshawn. Amen. Amen. Jimmy Evans is not considered young anymore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And neither is Miss Praise God, praise God. We thank God for all that he is to all of us. And right now we're before you to open up our devotional service. We're asking that if there's anyone that have a testimony, um, please be mindful of the time and of all of your fellow people that might want to testify after you. Praise him. Praise Him. Praise
everybody. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God with the end of my life, to my pastor, to my first lady, to everybody from the pulpit to the door. Yes. Yes. I just want to thank God for waking me up this morning, starting me on my way. Yes. Yes. I just want to thank God for allowing me to step through his doors one more time. Yes. 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 Shout out to sing this song. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh,
throw the part, let's throw this back in the hand of our brother, Jonathan Kyler Sutter.
that we be praying for. She may have a sick person in her family. So she prayed to God for them. So let's talk for blessing.
delivered today because I know there's a few people that are here today that need healing. Just by their testimony, some people are here today need healing. Some people are here today need protection. Hallelujah. I know my grandmother left me had the others need healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. When you claim him, and it's called the But first, we're going to receive Sister Deborah Booth, Sister Deborah Booth, and her daughters. They're going to first come and sing selection. It may have been a surprise, but we are. It's a request for them to sing. Then, immediately following them, we will have Faith Tabernacle House of Prayer. Um, either you all can come at one, or a representative of a young person, and y'all can do that. It's your choice. Amen. Amen. Praise God.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I'm back again. Amen. God is good. Okay. God is truly, truly good. Okay. This song that we're getting ready to sing is called Everything. Yes. If he's been okay. anything to you, yes. just begin to think on who he has been to you. Has he been your savior? Has he been your healer? Yes. Has he been your strong tower? Yes. Has he been your way maker? Has he made ways for you, provided for you? This song says everything. Hallelujah. Just begin to think. Think about who he is to you. He's your master. He's your savior. He's your ruler.
that is mercy is everlasting. And I give honor to God in my life. I give honor to my pastor, my husband, Apostle Evans. To my mentor, Hallelujah. Right. I speak highly of her because I watched her as a young woman. And I tried to emulate her in many things. I couldn't play piano. <laughs> but I emulated her because the way she lived before me. And that's our leg lady for being her own. And I think I'm her husband, Apostle Owens. I'm always telling Arena I'm the oldest. Hallelujah. I give mine to Lorena, his, his mother, the speaker of the hour. I give honor to her. And to all the saints that came with us. They sent my sister Peggy here, but I don't see her. Where is she? My oldest brother, and that's one of my sisters. I thank God for them being here. Hallelujah. But I, they asked me to introduce, oh, they call him Marky. But I went to school with Mark's brother, Mark's father. And, but what I see of Mark, because the Bible says, why you have seen, mm -hmm. not gossip, yeah. but yeah. what you have seen. And as a young man, I used to go to Norristown every summer. If there was choir reversal, there was Mark. If there was a church service, there was Mark. There was a lot, a lot of young people in the church, but they weren't seen as dedicated as he was when I saw him as a young man. And when I heard him preach for the first time, All right. I was mesmerized. I know he's under a fantastic pastor. But he put that subject, that title, it was called Listen. And he put it together. So I want you to listen to the word of God that is coming from our own Deacon. Deacon William Mark. Ramsey, ask you to stand on your feet and see them. For thou hast been 
wherever thou shalt be, great is thy faithfulness.
honor to the people of this house. I want to Evans, to Lady Evans. I give honor to my pastor in his absence, the Apostle Larry T. Owens, to our first lady, Lady Owens. I give honor to my mother, who has traveled all the way. And to all the saints of God, and the saints of Tabernacle that have traveled with us to be a part of this great service, I give honor to you as well. I'm very biased in saying this because at, in the local assembly, I also serve as the YPU president. All right. And I'd like to give honor to the greatest ministry of God's church, and that is the YPU. Amen. There's nothing like the YPU. You can turn with me to James, the first chapter. James, the first chapter. You can hold that spot. We're going to start at the 12th verse, but you can hold that spot. James chapter 1. But you can hold that spot. We'll come back to it towards the middle, right. towards the end. And the Lord has given us a message for us in preparation for the end. That there's always discrepancies. There's always... A, we can't always agree on where we are in the timeline of the end. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we can agree on is that the end is here. Amen. And that God is coming back. Amen. And so our faithful God has given us a word to prepare us for the end. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so in the end, there's going to be a great day of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible describes that God himself will descend from the heavens. Yes. With the shout and the trump of God and the voice of the archangel. And we'll get to meet Jehovah, uh, Jehovah the Lord of hosts. And it says that he will descend with a host of his angels. And they will gather the saints, the elect of God, from every corner of the earth and every side of heaven. And the dead in Christ will rise. And we which are alive and remain will be caught up to meet God in the clouds. And the Bible says that we are to comfort one another with these words. But every time we preach about the end, or we teach about the end, it brings a fear over people. And generally it's because they feel that their, their soul is not ready to be received by God. That I might have done some things that God does not accept, and therefore in the end, he might not call me home. That I will be left here with those who have to deal with with the next resurrection. Sometimes an uncertainty comes over people when we talk about the end where the scripture tells us that we're supposed to use the end as words of comfort. An uncertainty comes over us because we have not reached the goals that we wanted to reach. I want to get married. I want to have children. I want to get to a certain career. I want to do this and I want to do that. And if God is coming back, that means I won't be able to reach it. And an uncertainty and a fear and this feeling and anxiety comes over you because you won't get to what you have decided you want. My God. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, if your hope in Christ is only of this it's life, right. then ye are of men most miserable. Right. Because there is a life far greater than we can imagine yes. that is from this earth. My There's right. a life that God says, I have gone to go prepare a place. Yes. That where I am, ye may be also. Yes. There's a place that's far greater than this that we can see. So Apostle Paul said, take your eyes off this earth and put it on heavenly things because Christ has prepared a place far greater than what you can see. And so we, as the people of God, Jesus has warned us and said that this day is coming quick. He said, I come as a thief in the night. And though this day will come upon us very quickly, it will not come as a surprise to the believers. Because our hope is in Christ and we're expecting this day to happen. But to the unbeliever, this day will come upon them very quickly. And the Lord will rapture his saints and his elect unto himself. And there is a timeline of events that must occur that in Matthew 24, in the book of Revelation, the yes. book of Daniel. Yes. And all these things must occur before we get to that point. Before we get to the great day of God. Yes. 
And one of the things that must occur that Jesus said is a time period called the Great Tribulation. And in this Great Tribulation, there's going to be intense trials and tribulation. There's going to be intense Things that we go through, not just the believers, but the entire world must experience this great tribulation. And he said the time is so trying that there's never been a time in this world, nor will there ever be, that can compare to how great the trials will be during this time. So Noah and the flood cannot compare to what's getting ready to happen. Right? The history of mass genocides, the history of slavery from the beginning of time to even now, cannot compare to the great tribulation. Yes. That the entire world at the same time must experience such intense trial. But then he says, if it were possible, even the elect would fall and be deceived in this time. If it were possible. He said, but if I wouldn't have shortened the days, no flesh would be saved. But for my elect's sake, I have shortened the time. It's always important to recognize who you are and whose you are and that you belong to God, that we are the elect that he is talking about when he teaches on the end time. That we have to recognize that as much as I want to say I was born and raised in the church and as much as I want to say that I was invited to preach here and we're just fellowshiping, this is the handiwork of God, yeah. that we have been ordered to come into God's house on his holy day yeah. to worship him and to praise him and to learn of his word. Yeah. We are the elect of God. And in great trials, God is thinking about you. In great trials, he's making sure that you're prepared to make it through. So he said, if I didn't shorten the time, no flesh would be saved. But for your sake, I'll shorten the time. It's important that we recognize who we belong to. And that we are the elect of the Most High God. And so he gives us these words to prepare us. But what kind of gets me is the part of the scripture when he says, if it were possible. I said, well, what exempts us, God? That through great trials, we're exempted from falling and being deceived. There's a lot of deception already going out. There's a lot of false doctrines already being preached. Right? He said, what exempts us? He said, it is my grace that exempts you from falling through great trials. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the lesson today, the message that God has given us is for us to learn how to use his grace through great trials trials and tribulation. My Lord. Many of us, we preach and we teach grace. And we thank God. I heard it throughout the service. We thank him for his grace. Yes. But God wants us to come up and actually understand right. what it means to thank him for his grace. Yes. What it means to actually use the grace of God rather than just acknowledging that it is there. Yes. The grace of God that we preach, we generally define it as the unmerited favor of God. Yes. And that definition is true, and it is accurate, but it is not a definition that can help us to understand, right? Grace is out of God's own compassion, out of his own holy character, has made a decision for your benefit. Out of his holy character, he said, I would rather give this to you or gift this to you so that you can succeed in everything that I have called you and have made you or purposed for you to do. The grace of God is not based off of performance or merit. It is not because you're great in the kingdom. It is not because you, you can prophesy better than anybody or sing better than anybody. It's because God sees what we need and he just provides. That is the grace of God. Not because you're great, but because God is great. And he knows exactly what we need. And so it is the grace of God. And so when we read scriptures about God's giving or God gifting, we're reading about his grace yes. out of his own compassion. Favor is similar to grace, but favor is based off of performance. If you walk upright before the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. That's favor because you've done something. But grace is when God says you need and I'll just provide. I'll just take care of it. I can see beforehand that you need it, and I'll just make a way for you right then and there. 
And so when we read the scriptures about God giving or God gifting to us, that's God's grace. Right? It says, for the wages of sin is death, but through the gift of God is eternal life. Right? It says, by grace are we saved through faith, not of ourselves, but it is the gift of God. So our salvation is based off of God's gifting, not our performance. And so when we read scriptures about the grace of God, we're referring to his gifts. So yeah. when we say, I thank you for your grace, you're saying, I thank you providing every gift for me to be prosperous in every assignment of my life. Yeah. When you say, thank you for your grace, I am saying, thank you that all that I have need of, God, your hand has provided. Grace is thy faithfulness. Right? We, when we talk about the grace of God, everything that God has assigned you, purpose for you to do, he said, I have set it up that you would succeed in everything that I have called for you to do. Amen. That is the grace of God. Amen. And so the grace of God or the gifts of God, his giving all have purpose. They have purpose and they're intended to be used. And many of us, we acknowledge that God is gracious, he's plenteous in grace, but we don't really learn how to use the gifts of God in the midst of adversity. All right. We don't know how to use the gifts of God or what he has given us in the midst of going through trials and tribulation. Uh -huh. And I, the, what God is teaching us now is that if you don't know how to suffer now, if you don't know how to go through trials now, yes. or like the Apostle Paul said, glory in tribulation yes. now, yes. how will you be able to stand in the great tribulation? Wow. How will you be able to stand in such intense trials when you're telling God, I want to give up now? My Lord. How will you be able to stand at the end of the world, in the evil day, when you tell God, I want to be taken out of these trials now? Yes. Yes. So he's teaching us, continue to endure. We have access to the grace of God for the intentions to endure through great trials. Amen. And so the church has the grace of God. The church has the gifts of God. And I want to, even though the focus is in James, I'm going to read something in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4 says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. And I want you to pay attention to those words, grace or gave or gifted. It says, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So you see, Apostle Paul is telling you have to walk worthy where God has called you. You have to walk worthy in every assignment that God has given you, every journey that God has put you on. And he tells us what it looks like to walk worthy. Our loneliness and meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called, and one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. It says, but unto every one of us is given grace yes. according to the measure of the gift yes. of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Jump down to verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And here's the purpose of these gifts. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. Many times we limit these callings to just callings, but these are actually gifts from God for his church. These are gifts from the Lord. And so how many of us have ever been in conversations of the church needs to come up? The church needs to be perfected in this, and the church needs to offer this. I've been a part of plenty of those conversations. And the Lord is saying, I already gifted you with everything to come to perfection. I've already gifted you and my church everything that it needs to be successful in what I've called the church to do. And so as those people who have those conversations, we rely on the leadership of the apostles. We rely on their ability to keep order by the word of God and the Holy Spirit. We rely on the gifts of the prophets to be able to see things that we cannot see, to foresee any evil that's trying to come our way. 
right? We are rely on the boldness of the evangelist to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to those that have not heard. We rely on the pastors and their, their ability to be compassionate, their shepherdship. We rely on the wisdom and understanding of the teachers to perfect the church. That's how we perfect the church and do the work of ministry from the gifts that God has yes, given us. Yes. That we cannot just treat the gifts of God anyway yes, because they have purpose in our lives as the church. If I want to come up and be perfected in God, I must rely on the gifts that God has given us. First Corinthians chapter 12, and I believe also in Romans chapter 12, it, it lists out many more gifts that were given by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And in some I gave the gift of healing, yeah. some I gave the gift of prophecy, and some I gave the gift of faith, and some I gave, and he just lists out all the things that he has given and gifts to the church. And he says, if you read down in 1 Corinthians 12, it said, so that we can use the gifts of God to support one another. That's right. To remain unified as his people, because with my gift, I can't say I'm more important than you. That if there's anybody who lacks amongst us, we would use our gifts to be able to pull them up and to support each other in, the, in Christ Jesus. All right, the Bible says, if there are any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Right? Let them pray the prayer of faith. Let them be able to call on the people who have been gifted the ability to heal, set free, and deliver people. Hallelujah. We are supposed to use the gifts of God to support one another. Yes. Amen. The Bible talks about that if we see our brother and taken up in a fault, uh -huh. it says, ye that are spiritual, yes. restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Yes. We use our gifts to restore each other. Yeah. When you're down, it is not for me to gossip about. Right. When you're down, it's not for me to talk about. When you're going through something, it's for me to use the gifts of God to support you. Yes, sir. When you're struggling, I remember when I struggled. And so I don't want the same thing to happen to you. So we use our gifts to support one another. If there's any lack amongst the body of Christ, let those who have gifts go and help them and restore them. Yes. The spirit of God and the spirit yes. of meekness. Yes. So the gifts of God have purpose yes. to perfect God's church. Amen. For us to maintain unity. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. To support one another. Yes. To lift up one another. Yes. They're meant to be used, not just acknowledged. Yes. They're meant to be used through great adversity. Yes. Not just to say, I thank God for being a, for having this gift. Yeah. I thank God for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Use it. Yes. Use it. Because many of us are complaining that the trials are getting too heavy. Many of us are complaining saying the trials are too much. But have you used the gifts of God that you would be able to endure through great trials? My Lord. So I, I can, we can see that the gifts of God and how they benefit the church, and how they benefit us as a collective church, and as the members of the body of Christ. Amen. But what about me on an individual basis? Yeah. So because the truth is, the trials are getting heavy. Mm -hmm. The truth is, some days I'm good, but some days it just gets very heavy and I want Say to that. give up. Amen. All right, what about us yes, sir. Yes, sir. who are dealing with mental health issues? Some days I'm good, I can smile amongst the people of God. I can laugh amongst family. But when I get by myself, the tears begin to fall. What about me? How can I use the gifts of God? Because I feel like I'm bombarded with temptations. I feel like the enemy is just hitting me on every side. And some days I can resist. But other days I just give in. What about me? How can we use the gifts of God to endure through great trials? Because giving up is not an option. Amen. Not in this time. Time is winding up and you cannot give up. We have to keep on going. We have to keep running. The Lord is soon to come. So let's read the scripture, James, the first chapter. We start at the 12th verse. It 
says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Yeah. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. It says, we have, some of us have different assignments. Some of us have different responsibilities. Right. He said, in some I gave to be apostles, in some pastors. Some. But unto all of us, he has called us to endure. Right. Unto all of the saints of God, he has called us to come through great trials. Right. And according to the scripture, there is a reward on the other side of yes. all of this. Yes. There's a reward when you come through the trial. Yes. And the Bible talks about how John saw a multitude in the heavens. Yeah. And he asked the elder, said, who are these? He said, these are they that come through great trials. Right? There's a reward on the other side of heaven that when you go through great trials, he said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. There's a reward on the other side, but it's unto those who endure. We have all been assigned to endure through great trials. The elect of God is not allowed to give up. The elect of God is not allowed to throw in the towel. And guess what? God is saying we have access. Access to him through our faith and through the gifts of God to be able to endure. Verse 14. I'm sorry, 13. No, I didn't finish 12. <laughs> Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Mm -hmm. The scripture is put into perspective because, the, to be honest, sometimes when we're going through intense trials, we start to look at God differently. Yeah. And say, uh, do you really think evil of me, God? And what's happening? Why are you allowing me to go through so much? What did I do to you, God, that you're making me go through great trials and tribulation? When are you going to come like you said? And we start to look at God differently. And we start to blame him for the different things that we are tempted with. And the scriptures wow. put it into perspective. Right? It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and oh, enticed. That's it. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Yes. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Yes. It says, do not err, my beloved brother. Yes. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. Yes. And cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That in all of this that we have learned, the scripture just points to us that there's no variableness in God, neither is there a shadow of turning. Since the foundations of the world, there was never any indication that God was going to turn on us. There's never been any indication that God was going to give up on his people. But he has always been a gift giver from the beginning and since the foundations of the world. If you look through the history of God in Israel and God in Adam and Eve, you will see that he was always there providing gifts to make sure that they were prosperous in everything that he had assigned them to do. The law of God is actually a gift unto us that the scripture said was intended to preserve us and to keep us in the way of God. Hallelujah. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of light. Yes. God has established gifts intended to help you, intended to make sure that you endure through every trial. Yes. There's no trial too big for God. Right. There's no trial too big for the gifts of God. Amen. Everything that God has established can overcome every temptation and everything that you're going through. Yes. You can tell God about your problems. You can tell him that your marriage seems to be failing, but I'm going to rely on the gifts of God. Uh, it seems that my mental health is going in the wrong direction, but I can rely on the gifts of God to help me. Right? It seems like my health is failing, but I can rely on the gifts of God to help me. And so I want to talk about a few gifts. There are plenty of gifts in the scriptures. We have access through our faith in God to a plethora of yes. gifts that we can use. Mm. And so one of the gifts of God that we should all know is the word of God itself. Thank the Lord. His word is a gift to us. That's right. Let's come on. Let's put our hands together and thank God for his word. His word is a gift all by itself. He 
has given us a word that he has never turned, his word cannot return unto him void. But it will accomplish everything that he has set it out to do and prosper in which he sent it out to do. But the word of God is even likened unto a sword. And the scripture says that it is the sword of the spirit. And it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Right, this word of God can be used against the adversary every time he tries to come in for attack. So how do I use the word of God in every attack of the enemy? Do you remember when Jesus had fasted? He ended his fast and the devil was trying to tempt him. Every response to the temptation of the devil, he responded with the word of God. And it cut right through the plans of the enemy trying to get Christ to leave his post. And so the enemy had nothing left to do but to leave Christ. And the Bible says, and he left him for a season. Yes. Right? It left him because the word of God is sharper and can cut through any plans of the enemy. The word of God is quick and it is able to accomplish that which God has intended for it to do. And it can thwart every plan of the adversary in your life. The word of God is our weapon. Yes. And I don't want any of us to think that the weapons to get through our trials are carnal. No. The, the scripture says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. If you have strongholds in your life, you better rely on the spiritual weapons of God to be able to bring them down in your life. The word of God is a gift. And it is a tool. For us to be able to endure. It holds the strength to be able to recognize that there is sin in, in the world. But I'm going to make the intentional decision to live right. Amen. It says the word have I hid in my heart yes. that I might not sin against thee. Yes. The word of God has a strength about it. That when I'm feeling those temptations of sin, when I feel the temptations of going the other way, when those negative thoughts keep coming, I can rely on the word of God that I would not act upon the sin that is right there before me. The word of God is a weapon of warfare. The Holy Ghost is a weapon. The Holy Ghost is a gift from God. The whole the Spirit of God is for us to be able to use to be able to, and same thing with the word of God, that we can have a, a, a conscious, intentional decision to choose right. Yes. That if I rely on the spirit of God, if I rely on Jesus Christ, that when I'm faced with evil, I can make the right choice. Yes. The truth about it is that even though in front of each other and in the presence of God, it seems like everything is well, but when I get back, and in the midnight hour, who's going to help me through my trials? Amen. Who's going to be there when nobody else is there? Yes. It's the Holy Ghost that is going to be there. Yeah. It said the Holy Ghost has purpose to teach you and to guide you and to bring back everything to your remembrance that Christ has taught us. Yes. The Holy Ghost is a gift to be able to make sure that you are always led in the spirit, that you don't do anything that would lead you to death. Yes. Right? So the Holy Spirit... The scripture says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead yeah. said if it dwells in you, it will quicken it your is. mortal body. Yeah. Yeah. And many times when we read those scriptures about quicken, we think about how we act when the spirit of God yeah. comes. Yes, right? We think that we're talking about the quick movements of our body. Uh -huh. Now the spirit of God does allow us to do that. Yeah. I tell people all the time who say it doesn't take all that. You don't have to act like that. I say because the Bible describes the Holy Ghost as fire. Yeah. You go touch an open stove and don't think your arm will touch that. I say we can't control it as you think because it is a holy fire that comes from heaven. But the scripture that says it shall quicken your mortal body is referring to coming alive. That the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if it dwells in you, it will quicken your mortal body and allow you to come out of dead works and to live for Christ. Dead works are in sin. Anything that allows you to go away from God, that causes separation from God, is dead works. Yes. Dead works produces death in you. Dead works causes separation between you and God. Yes. Dead works is disobedience of the word of God. Dead works is disobedience to the law of God. Yes. Dead works is knowing to do right and still choosing to do wrong. Yes. That is dead works. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost can pull you right out of that yes. and quicken you and make you become alive in Christ Jesus. Those 
are dead works. That the Holy Ghost is a gift. And how many of us have dealt with or know somebody who's dealing with addiction? And they say, I can't help it. That this is just what I do. But you're right, you can't help it. But God can. There's no addiction that is stronger than the God that we serve. There's no addiction stronger than the God that we serve. That if you or somebody else is dealing with it, you can tell them, rely on the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost and allow it to awake you out of that dead state. Because the Holy Ghost is a gift. You hear people say, oh, the church preaches the same thing. Well, if we would have received the Holy Ghost from the first time, if we would have received God from the first time, we wouldn't have the people preaching about the Holy Ghost that saves, the Holy Ghost that delivers, the Holy Ghost that heals, the Holy Ghost that sets free, that can break every addiction, that can break every pain in your life. It's the Holy Ghost. Because when they get to the age of choice, then that evil thing is an option. Oh, yes. And so you, what you do is you try to shield them. When you have a child and at one and two and three years old, when they're absorbing the languages around them, yes. you shield them from bad language. Because when they get old enough to make choice about their language, you don't want them to even have the choice of bad language within them. You don't want your child to hear certain words that are reserved for adults or shouldn't be, res- uh, be spoken at all. That's right. There's certain things that we try to shield because we don't want them to have knowledge of it. And he said, when they are exposed to these things, we can't even tell how they're processing it. When you think your child is just staring off into space, you don't know what they were exposed to at school. You don't know what they were exposed to at a family's house or in sports or wherever. They said, we've been a hope that whatever they exposed to, God shielded them from it. My response to God was, that that makes sense. Right? That makes sense to shield our children so that they don't know, they're not aware that evil is even a choice. Yeah. He said, well, didn't I intend that from the beginning? Yeah. Didn't I intend that with Adam and Eve? Yeah. I only wanted them to know goodness. Oh, yeah. I only wanted them to know me as their God, yeah. as their provider. He said, but now that they have the choice, yeah. in their choice, evil yeah. is an option for them. Yeah. Yeah. He said, didn't I intend not to let them know the difference between good and evil? That's right. He yeah. said, when the serpent was trying to trick Eve, or when he tricked Eve, he said that God doesn't want you to become like God. Yes. And when they ate of the fruit, the Bible says their eyes were open, and God said they now have become like us. Yes. Now they have knowledge of good and evil. Yes. And the strength to be able to have the knowledge of good and evil and still choose good is a health.
heavenly characteristic. It's a celestial thing that only God can give you. He said, so now that they have knowledge of it, I had to set on course to give them a gift that when evil is present, they would only choose me, and that is the Spirit of God. Because the Bible says, if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of our flesh. So he said, now I had to give them the strength. I had to give them the ability to choose good in the midst of evil. Yeah. Apostle Paul said, when I try to do good, evil yeah. seems to be always present. Yeah. When I try to make godly decisions, my flesh seems to always want to make a decision too. Yeah. But the gift in what God taught me is that there's a gift in him shielding us. Yeah. It's a gift that he does not tell us everything. That's right. And many of us, through great trials, we question the Lord. Yeah. We say, why did you take my loved one early? Yeah. Why did you allow me to go through sickness? Yes. Why my marriage? Why did you have to mess this up, God? We start to blame God. And he said, I'm shielding them because they cannot handle knowing everything about their own lives. Yeah. Don't we thank God for danger seen and unseen? Oh, yeah. But if God told us every danger that was after you, you would never leave the house. If God told you every danger that was coming your way, everything that was happening in the spiritual realm to mess up your relationship with God, that's right. we would be anxious driven. We would be fearful. If God told you everything that was going to happen to your children, so instead he said, just rely on my spirit. Rely on the spirit of God that I'm going to put in you. That it may be a gift to you. That it will prosper in you. That you will be successful in everything that I have called you to do. It is not our doing. But it is the gift of God. Amen. Everything we just learned is all of the grace of God. So when we say, Lord, I thank you for your grace. Amen. We say, Lord, I thank you for your grace. We're saying, I thank you for everything that you have provided for me. And the word of God has many examples of God's grace. Mm. And it has many uh, testimonies. The Apostle Paul talked about how he was attacked by the angel of Satan. Yeah. And when he went to God about it, the Lord said, In weakness, Paul, am I made strong. Yeah. He said, But my grace is sufficient yeah. for you. In other words, everything that I've gifted you is enough for you to overcome every attack of the enemy. Every time the enemy tries to come against you, I have graced you or gifted you with everything to be successful on the other side. When I read the scripture, it's not much work that we have to do because the Bible says that when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up and stand with the gift. That the grace of God says all I have to do is rely on Jesus. Paul said, I was instructed, or I've learned how to be content. Yeah. I've learned to be content. Yeah. The ability to use the gifts of God in the midst of your trials takes practice. Yeah. A lot of times we get into our own heads, but it takes practice and it takes relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah. It takes for you to surrender to the Lord and say, whatever you have to offer, I'll use. I'll get out of my own way yes. and surrender to you, Lord. Yes. Yes. So Apostle Paul said, I had to learn how to be content yes. in the way of God. Yes. No, no matter what state I am in, I've learned to be content. Yes. Yes. And when someone says I've learned, that means that at some point in Apostle Paul's life, he did not know. That's right. And God taught him yes. that you can rely on the grace of God and be content while those gifts are working in your favor. Amen. And he said that I was instructed both to be both to abound and to abase. Amen. Both to be up and to be down. That's he right. said I, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry. Yes. Right? Yes. Both to abound and to suffer need. Yes. In other words, he said I know how to do it all. I've yes. learned from God that there's when I'm up, I still have to go through Christ. Yes. And when I'm down, I still have to suffer through yes. Christ. Yes. And the next scripture says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That no matter the circumstance, no matter where I am or the season of my life, as long as I do it through Christ, then it is my strength. So Apostle Paul said, when I'm down and things are rough and tough, and to be honest, you want to give up. 
He said, if I do it through Christ, the result of it is my strength. Amen. And on the flip side, when everything is well, everything is going well, if I do it through Christ, my prosperity through Christ, it is still my strength. He said, in order to do this, you must have contentment. So no matter the spectrum or the season of your life, strength is our portion from God. Yes. That's why the Bible says godly contentment we is great gain. gain. Yes. Godly contentment because no matter which side, as long as you stay content in Jesus Christ, strength is your portion. Yes. So church, I want us to understand beyond just hearing it today that the grace of God is intended to work for you. The grace of God that he has gifted us is for our advancement in him. It is to prepare us for the last days. There are many gifts throughout the scripture that the Bible tells us, put on the whole armor of God, that you would be able to stand against the wiles, the tricks and the snares, the deception of the adversary. Put on the armor of God that you would be able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand. The gifts of God are set up to serve you. To make sure that you are prosperous. So let us let us stand today. We want to go before the Lord in yes. prayer. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Bless the Lord. And thank him for his grace. Thank yes. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let us just begin to worship God and thank him for his grace. Hallelujah. Let's begin to thank God for his grace. Hallelujah. Thank you for providing every tool that we need, God. God, you are a great provider to us. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now as your people. Yes. As one voice and as one people, God, we lift up our worship and our praise toward you. We lift up our praise toward you, thanking you for your grace. God, all that we need, your hand has provided. Everything for us to be prosperous in you, Jesus. You have provided it for us. And Lord, we thank you. We receive your grace in the name of Jesus. We thank you that through rough trials and tribulation, God, you are there. Your spirit of God dwells in us and it is a gift to us to make sure that we are prosperous in you. And Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for every good gift. Yeah. We thank you for every perfect gift. We thank you for sending this down from above. God, you said it is your good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And God, we receive your kingdom. We receive your grace. We receive your love. We receive your strength. We receive your spirit, God. Let your spirit rain down on this place, God. We thank you for taking the seed and unseen. We thank you, God. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for your grace. You are a gift-giving God. You are a gift-giving God, and we thank you. Hallelujah. We lift you up. We lift up your holy name. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank God for the good word that was given on today. Didn't that bless your hearts on today? Didn't that bless your hearts on today? We are so glad for the word of the Lord. For the word of the Lord is always blessed. There has been a minor change in the program at this time. Apostle Levitt has requested for a march from the Honorable Elect Lady Bina Owens. Receive her with a hearty amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together for the word of God that we call today. God is the joy and the strength of my life. Oh, you take me for me as Christ.
because if it's only the children, he gets whatever he thinks that's going to tear you down. Hallelujah. But somebody said the devil is a liar. Yeah. The devil is a liar. Praise God, God. I'm just happy to be here. Just to have you. Here she goes. I thank God. That's my daughter. Thank God for her. And I thank God for the fellowship. Thank God for the fellowship. We haven't been here in a long time. And when I heard that he got the invitation, I said, oh, we got to go. Because <laughs> we haven't been in Brooklyn in a long time. And I am so impressed with these musicians. Mm. You guys are something else. Thank God for you. Keep on playing. Uh, they all for the edification of the body of Christ. They gave gifts unto us. Hallelujah. And this shown up is a gift from God. And I'll tell you, it makes you want to get up and dance. I said, these knees was aching. But they were naked. I would be jumping all around here. But I thank God for these musicians. Hallelujah.
Come on and give God praise and thank you.
Please, for the instructions, please go to the the wall, face the wall, come around, and then go down the arm. Please, for the instruction of the usher, as he will let you know what we do. Doesn't mean you gotta stop praising him. Doesn't mean you gotta stop praising him. You need more than I ever expected. You need more than I ever Which is dollar sign faith holy 193. That's cash app dollar sign faith holy 193. We ask everybody on the right side, please stand. We ask everybody on the right side. Everyone on the right, please stand. My right, my right.
pray you take something away from this message that was brought to us today. And you don't let it just be something that you experience today. But let it seep in and apply to your life throughout your days. Because, like the preacher said, learn how to use the Lord's grace through great trials and tribulations. Don't give up now, so when the time comes, you'll be able to stand strong in God's glory. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the remarks, wonderful remarks coming from our brother Marcus. At this time, we are going to ask you to all stand. I know the program says last final remarks and benediction, but those that know my grandfather for the final songs, remarks, benediction scriptures, and all that apply to him. Please stand for the reference of Apostle Michael Jeffrey Evans Taylor. If I could say a word, yeah. If I could say a word, yeah. If I could say a word, yeah. Oh, do so. I would just wait.
God bless you. Please be seated to the house of God, the holy church of the living God, built on the ground of the truth. And house of prayer for all people. We thank and we praise God. We bless him simply because of who he is. See, some people only bless him because he does stuff. That's conditional blessing. How many people just bless him because of who he is? We've seen that song. We say, because of who you are, you sing it, but how many really bless him simply because of who he is? Don't wait for him to heal you. Bless him because he's a healer. Amen. Amen. Whatever he doesn't do, you still owe God your blessings and your praise. Amen. Oh, come on. Amen, people of God. Amen. That's what he was talking about, that grace. Amen. We don't, we don't get it because anything we do, we get it because of the goodness of his heart. Amen. And we have to understand anything we do to God, if we do it for anything outside of love, then it's not real. I knew it was getting all amens on that. Amen. Whatever you do for God, if you do it outside of love, it's not real. Because he said out of his own word, that these draw nigh to me with the honor with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. What he wants is love, people of God. Amen. So we thank God that we have a young man here today that I believe that love God. Praise God for him. Before I go any further, I thank God for the presence. I'm so glad they made it in. They're in our town, our area. Amen. I'm going to ask the front family to stand. This is the daughter and the son-in-law of the apostle and children, grandchildren of Apostle David Wallace. Amen. They're in our area and they made it in. And before I go any further, we would not have you come this far and travel by public transportation. They didn't tell me they were telling about public transportation. I, I would have driven to Jersey to pick you up. When I do a big holy church? Uh, amen, amen. The fact that you thought enough to see a lot of people come in your church area and won't come. Amen. amen. They called me even before they headed to New York to let you know it's gonna be in the area and they in the church and I thank God for that, amen. Now Deacon, I'm not gonna put the police on the spot but you're supposed to know what to do, Deacon Fun. So come down and give us greetings. And we see you out. Deacon Fun, they come and give us greetings for the family. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on down. Amen. Amen. Y'all moved out of Georgetown, right? Y'all still in Georgetown? No, we're in Columbus, Ohio. I thought, I thought he moved out. Yeah, they're in Columbus, Ohio now. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. I will not be up here long. I just want to thank God for life. Uh, this is the first time ever being here in Brooklyn, right. and um, you have a lovely edifice, Apostle, a lovely church. Um, hospitality is awesome, outstanding, and yes, sir, we took the public transit. I wanted to. All right. I wanted to. I wanted to. And, uh, we, and, and God has really been good to us, so we just thank God. You have to uh, just uh, pray for us, and we will pray for you. We love you all. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. Because uh, we want to give honor to my wife, the elect lady Hattie Evans. Amen. Yeah. To our assistant pastor, the evangelist Margaret Barrett. Amen. To our evangelist Johnson. To our preacher. The speaker is the person that sits in DC. You know, the speaker of the house. That's the speaker. But we have a preacher. They always, I don't judge preachers by their titles. I based upon what they say and do. Right. Amen. There are a lot of people who have the titles and can't preach a lick. They can hum and hoon and all that stuff and ain't said a word. But he knows for a fact I'm one of his fans. <laughs> Haven't I shared that with you? I'm not talking about since he's been here. Amen. One thing I don't believe in, people of God, I want you to hear me real good. Yes. We come against drugs, mm -hmm. the harlots, mm -hmm. 
adultery, all the different things we come against. But it's something that's prevalent in the church, and the church don't talk about it enough, and that's respect the persons. And the Bible said to have respect the person is a sin. So while y'all trying to send the people out there to hell, because they're not doing what y'all doing, when, y get, when they get there, you might be open the door and let them in because you have respect the persons. And I'm going to say it for him. I put, then I put you to the side after the youth convention. I put him to the side. I let him know. Don't ever be affected by what the crowd does. Why don't you do what the Lord told you to do? Let me tell you why I said that. I can say it for him. I, I can, I'm your uncle. Let me tell you why I can say it for him. We have to stop having celebrities in the church. Your name doesn't make you a preacher. I'm going to the pause there. I honor you, Lady Lady Owens. I honor you. Amen. You go back. You told my big brother, I left a seat for him. You know, I, left a, I didn't let nobody sit there. I left a seat for him. I don't care if a thousand other preachers came in, they would not sit in that seat. That was for my big brother. Amen. Amen. You hear me? You go back and tell him. Amen. But let me say this. I saw something that you just you convinced that disturbed my spirit. And I picked up the phone. I called Apostle Owens. He'll tell you. I called him. Because you can drive people away by trying to kiss up the other folks. Yep. Yeah. Amen. See, I can say, I ain't going nowhere. I don't need church because of people. I don't let stuff. Nothing chases me away from church. Amen. And I've been through a lot in church. Nothing chases me away from church. Mom and dad, am I telling the truth? Nothing, I didn't make all good decisions in church, but nothing chases me away from church. I saw something that disturbed my spirit at the youth convention. I, don't, I want to share it with you. I want to tell you how much I appreciate this young man. See, a lot of times you don't know people what they have to deal with coming up and still be faithful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Because he walked that floor at the youth convention. Brother, Brother Pierce has no clue who you are. He has no clue who you are. But when he left there, he wanted to find out who you were. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to tell you. See, y'all think that Apostle Evans invited him. He don't even know who he is. Oh, he, he heard him at the youth convention. Yeah. Yeah. This is how I you president. He said, I want, what's that guy's name? Uh, uh, the, the young guy, the young man that preached at the youth. That's why I want to come. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to understand now. There were four guys that preached at the youth conference. I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it real. It was not just one guy. There were four guys that preached at the youth conference. But there's a difference between preaching and performing. Yeah. Now, that's what we tell the truth. I'm being very apostolic now. There's a difference between preaching and performing. Yeah. I sat there in the pool. I'm like, wow. I thought the presider, y'all there, yeah. introduced both preachers. Yes. Yes. Are y'all going to write anything happen? See, I can speak up for y'all. <laughs> am I telling the truth? You said yes. So, am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth, wife? Am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? The second preacher had a wife. The first preacher had a wife, too. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't want me to. Am I telling the truth, baby? We have to stop this because a person may not be a celebrity. All I want is the word of God. He didn't say he that have ear to hear, hear what Apostle Evans, what Apostle Owen. He said let him hear what the Spirit said to the church. And Thursday night, the Spirit was speaking to the church through this young man. And that's why he's preaching at Faith Holy Church. We don't bring performers to this church. We bring preachers. And I don't care what your name is. If I want a performance, I'll buy a ticket to go to the theater. And I said to myself, okay. Why 
could get his wife get up and say something before he gets up. Yeah. Hey, y'all are there. Yeah. I know I'm being recorded. I can care less. I, 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 but, but this needs to stop. Amen. Amen. This needs to stop. Because I looked at his face when he sat down. And I saw that it bothered him that you see his grandmother, how she sang today? So that lets him, let's people know, just like preacher number two had somebody that can sing and so forth. He had a whole church of people there that couldn't sing to represent him. I'm saying this for a reason so y'all can just listen sometimes and stop dancing or everything and listen and watch common sense. But you'd be surprised what you do to kill preachers' spirits. Now, I can say that's a protocol officer too. Time for all to call. And if there's two preachers, you don't call somebody out of the congregation to help you with the second preacher. You call the other preacher that preached with you. I want you to know that Uncle Bishop was here. I'm looking at everything. So that's why the deacon William Mark Ramsey is the deacon that he is today. See, sometimes somebody got to tell people a story. Amen. See, y'all see, see the person standing up there, but sometimes you don't know what they have to go through before they get up here. And y'all think it's all about standing up here, but you'd be surprised what it's like to have that done right in your face. Amen. And the Lord would have it that the next day I was at Walmart and he saw my daughter. He said, your dad is here? And I was standing by the front door. I saw when he came past and he ran back and grabbed me and hugged me. I was like, oh, you know, that broke my heart. I said, oh, bless his heart. Bless his heart. Why I'm saying that? Because we have to encourage the young preachers. We have to encourage them. We'll holler and yell behind the apostles, the prophets, and so forth. And, 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 and it costs you a lot of money to holler behind them, too. That's right. Amen. That's right. But this young man, I thank God for him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. A lot of people think he can preach for me. No, he can preach to me anytime. Don't ever be so high-minded that a young man like him can't preach to you. Amen? Did he not say in the book? Did he try to impress anyone but God? Amen. See, these are the examples that the people won't put up in front of people. They want to put up names in front of the people. I'm going to be a cheerleader to put them up everywhere I can. Amen. When he came before the credential board, his grandfather and I, we served on the credential board together. And, you know, usually what we do on the credential board, if somebody from our local church comes before, we be quiet. That particular pastor stayed quiet. So his grandfather, you know, wasn't saying anything. But I know his heart was probably saying a lot because he represented God first, himself next, his parents, his grandparents, and Faith Tabernacle, he represented them well. So, he's not just a deacon because he's a man, he's a born of five or deacon in the body of Christ. With the laying on the hand by the person tree. So keep praying for him. Amen. He needs your prayers. One thing we don't tell people enough, when you try to live the way he lives, let's keep it real, the devil is going to come after him. See, y'all won't tell young folks that until they get in trouble, then you say, what you doing that for? You should have warned them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The devil don't go after people he already has. They go after people that he don't want to keep doing what they're doing. Because he know he's going to reach souls. You know why he's going to reach souls? Because he kept preaching about my favorite subject in this church, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> And in this church, that's the first message, that's the second message, and that's the last message, and that's the only message, the Holy Ghost. You want a blessing plan? Find another church. I don't sell blessing plans here. 
For what is popular man to gain the whole world, lose his soul. This man was telling y'all about the Holy Ghost. And I'm so glad he mixed about the Holy Ghost. I don't understand these modern day prophets, and I'm gonna probably close with this. I don't understand these modern day prophets. Lady Owens, I don't understand. I'm keeping it real. They know me from the Holy Church. I, I don't understand modern day prophets. They got prophecy of everything but people receiving the Holy Ghost. You ever notice that? They can tell you what you're going to get on such and such a day in the week in the month, but they can't prophesy about getting the Holy Ghost. Don't you know getting the Holy Ghost was a prophecy and not just a promise? Don't you know it was a prophecy and not just a promise? Joel is a prophet. He prophesied. Everybody looking for the earthquakes in diverse places. Everybody looking for wars and rumors of war. But he also said in the last day, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Why are we not prophesying that? Y'all get excited. Oh, you said we get a new house. Ah. You can go straight to be boss in the new house. Yeah. Keep preaching the Holy Ghost. Yeah. People want me to shut up. I'm not gonna shut up. I, I love the preaching. Keep preaching the Holy Ghost. Keep preaching the Holy Ghost. If you preach the blessings in here, the people be running crazy. You preach, you keep preaching the Holy Ghost. And when they get the Holy Ghost, they can really run crazy. My daughter has a late godmother. She was Bishop Witt's daughter-in-law. She said something that people got upset for her for, but she was concerned about her soul. She said, I don't ever want to be rich. And you know how your money folks probably hate that I said that. You know why she said she didn't want to be rich? Because she read in the scripture how hard it is for a rich man to so she said, I don't want anything that's gonna make it difficult for me. They didn't say they couldn't get in. They said it's difficult. So when you're trying to get riches, the devil hear you. He don't mind not getting riches. That's why, notice God didn't say that no man can serve God and the devil. He said God and man, man. So, I thank God for a preacher that preaches the Holy Ghost. And I thank God that Apostle Owens gave him leave that he could come. Amen. And I thank God all of Faith Tabernacle came with him. Amen. Y'all know when Faith Holy and Faith Tabernacle get together, there's a whole lot of faith. <laughs> Amen. So we praise God. Amen. Let's close it out. We have refreshments outside for takeout trade. That's why he was giving up menus and so forth. It was easier to do it that way and so forth and I'm so happy to see um, my oldest brother Lord yes. Deacon George Jay, Amen Glad to see him and then my sister Kay Amen Thank you all for it. Happy to see everybody but I'm definitely happy to see your family and we praise God to each and every one of you let us continue praying you one for the other the effectual from the prayer of the righteous of the others will we continue praying one for the other Will we continue praying one for the other? Will we continue praying one for the other? Amen. You never know when you least expect there's somebody that you need a prayer that you need to give. So, and faithful the church, remember next week we will not be in service here. We'll be on the road going to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to be with Abundant Harvest where the pastor is the evangelist Beth Ann Smith. Amen. So we'll, we'll be there. As you keep praying for us, that you will have safe travel. Lady Owens, I'm going to let you know this. From October until, was it last week or week before last? Week before, I did not preach. From October, and I was not sick. There was nothing wrong with me whatsoever. But we got preachers in this church. And during that time, and during all that time, all the preaching, God was sending souls that joined the church. Kept coming in, joining the church, joining the church. And I thank God for the preachers in the church. Amen. And so this is my one of my first outside appointments in a while because I, I just followed the leading of the Lord. Now I was just sitting there like, I'm sick. No, I, I would get up behind them and get excited because they were preaching and so forth. But uh, I thank God 
that we are back to traveling and again and so forth. So let us meet as many as possible at the Concord Nursing Home, our ministry here. We are blessed to the Concord Nursing Home near our actual church, and they look forward to the ministry of Faith Holy Church to go there Sabbath mornings. And they look forward, I mean, we ain't talking about this, they have church. And I thank God for that. So we would go and be with that. And then afterwards, we would head down to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We pray for safe travels for everyone back. And also to the Font family, safe travels back and so forth. Amen. 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 And then even locally, safe travels. Amen. And you'd be surprised. Something's happened right close to home. So we thank God. Bless you to share. Bless you to share. Am I forgetting anything? Oh, yeah, the offering. All uh, right. Um, who? Okay. Who? Oh, okay. Did y'all enjoy LJ out here on, on that floor? If you get out of young folks' way, they'll have church. Come on. Uh, Brother Leroy. We say you call him LJ, Brother Leroy. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. On the behalf of Faith Holy and Faith Tabernacle, I want to give you this token of appreciation. Amen. Bless you all, man. This is how we drive in the We stop on fellow sugar with a fist bump. Thank you. 
Look up ready to call names. All right, I got, I got excited. Here we go.
Denton Campbell. Denton Campbell. Calvina Scott. Where's Jason? Monique Campbell.